Here. Ms. Andrews? Here. Mr. Reed? Here. Chairman Rowe? Here. Can I get a approval of the March 23rd, 2022 regular meeting minutes? I'll make a motion to accept. I'll second. Roll call. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Vukatic? Yes. Mr. Golis? Yes. Mr. Andrews? Yes. Chairman Rowe? Yes. All right, so uh, before I call the first waiver, just make sure when I do call your waiver request, you step up to the podium, make sure you're signed in, state your name, your address, and give us a little bit uh, background on the variance that you're seeking. This is a board of five, so you'll need three yes votes for your uh, variance to be accepted. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. First waiver is W1677-22, waiver of ordinance 269. Dash 2001, section 1127.02, relating to R2 permitted uses. Location is 2016 Mominy Street. The applicant owner is Lynn Hamilton. Chairman, could I get give a little update? Real quick? You can give all the update you need. So, uh, my understanding is there's a mobile home sitting on this lot now. Correct. And it's in uh, disrepair. Okay. We would like to replace it with a new one. Um, it, the you're not allowed to use a mobile home. Correct. In a single family R one R two district. So that's why we're here tonight. Okay. So and also I wanted to let you know that the square footage is a less than we uh, usually would allow for a single family. Too. Which I. I think we've had at least one or two of these situations back in this same area where. That's right. We've never, to my knowledge, I don't think we ever granted permission for a mobile home where there wasn't. Correct. Before. Exactly. Okay. The issues with this, is, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an ex Stevens Hamilton. I'm his wife. Okay. He's on oxygen and stuff, so he couldn't be here. But two of the main reasons we would like to do this, number one, is to upgrade the property value because with the mobile home that's sitting there right now, um, it does need work. And the other reason is I want to get rid of the propane. And I do have another mobile home that I'm looking at that's 1,120 square feet. So I'd like to leave it open that if I choose that one, then, and it's a three bedroom, so that gets it closer to, I think it's 1,200, right? And um, obviously, if our variance re allows for that, you'll still have to follow back up with building and zoning on your your site plan, basically. But those are the two main reasons, because the new mobile homes are totally electric and more energy efficient, and it will do away with the pro that big, gigantic propane tank in the backyard. Yeah, the minimum square footage. Okay. It looks like this one's 820, but you're also looking at another one. You said that is what? It's 1120. It's three. 11, it's a 20. three bedroom. Okay. And I believe yes, they are brand new. Okay. It's through Clayton Homes. It's not a used home. Brand new. They have a bundle package where they do this everything. They'll even take the old one out. So it takes care of everything. Jim, is that taking up four lots? Is that what that drawing shown? Is that is that sitting on four parcels combined? I think four parcels are combined. Okay. And there's an existing outbuilding also? Is that what I'm seeing? It's a garage. A garage. Two-car garage, yes. And there's also a shed and a swimming pool. <clears throat> Any other questions from the board? I guess just one more informational for Jim. Do you know how many mobile homes are actually in that subdivision back in there by chance? I don't believe there's over 10. I would say when I drove through, the majority of them are mobile homes. Correct. Yes. yes. Especially that street, I think. Yes. Correct. I think there's a it appears that the, the original single lot size, you probably wouldn't be able to put a 1,200 square foot house on a single That's lot. Right. Any other questions from the board? Anybody else here to speak for or against the matter? 
With that, I would entertain a motion. I'll make a move that uh, we approve waiver 1677-22. Is that for both possibilities or is that all covered under it? I guess we need to uh, amend the motion to include the alternate uh, the 11, uh, let's see, 1120 square foot as well. Either or. Be correct. So I don't, I guess, Ron, do you want to okay. rescind your original motion and make a new motion? Okay, I'll, I'll rescind the original motion and uh, I'd like to uh, accept waiver 1677-22 with the additional uh, 1120 square foot trailer or the 820 square foot trailer. I'll support. Roll call. Mr. Vukatic? Yes. Mr. Andrews? Yes. Mr. Golis? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Chairman Rowe? Yes. You're all set. You can follow back up with building and zoning. Afterwards. Okay, so do I take any paperwork or I'm it's it'll get we'll we'll we're good. We'll send you the uh, Thank you very much, Jim. All right, so in addition to our original schedule, we got a clarification. So that'll be W1676 22 clarification of motion concerning fence waiver at March 23rd, 2022 meeting. Jim, do you want to lead this off? Sure. Um, I've, been, I've been actually out at the site and um, most recently. Applicant has uh, fill, filled in a little bit along the bottom of the fence. Okay. And he plans to do a little bit more. Now, the question was, um, uh, in my mind's eye, you said uh, you wanted it level, and there's a step down where the six-foot fence is. I I personally think that that's uh, okay. We We do that all the time from six foot to four foot fences at a step down. Um, and the the reason I don't think it's a problem is that there wasn't a waiver needed for the six foot fence to begin with. But uh, I went out, the top of the fence all the way across looks even um, and straight. So, so uh, uh, I, I, think I think he's in compliance. Okay. With, with your motion, but that's why I brought it here just to make sure. Okay. So we're clarifying that what, what what's installed met our motion. That's and, correct. Okay. And so we're, the six foot transition to the seven foot is not a concern, obviously, because six foot could be installed regardless without. Without. Any, it. Okay. Chairman Rowe. Yes. I believe I was the one that actually added that amendment about keeping the top of the fence level when we discussed it. And my intention was um, that uh, the pictures of the existing fence kind of showed it staggered, each panel staggered up and down. Um, so I was trying to get some uniformity in that for the appearance sake. I, I also visited the site today before the meeting and, and believe that the um, installation meets what we were asking for because the only place that it's not level at the top is where it steps down from four foot to six foot okay or the other way around um which you really couldn't do any other way other than to step it down there isn't a you know way to keep those level they're two different heights above grade so all right so am i treating this open to no I just, just clarification that you're okay I just, I just so there is no there, right. there was a lot of controversy about it, uh, so I thought okay. it would be the best thing to do. All right. So we're good. You're well, I, I, I would like to hear from the members. If they, okay. If, if, they, if, they, if they think it is according to what they thought. Personally, me, I, I, it's exactly where I thought we were. Pretty much where Dave was at is 
the existing fence was up and down, panel, panel. And this is definitely uniform, so that's where we are. And just a great difference to either side is the whole reason why we did it. If he's filling in, basically helping out, that that's doing exactly what we were looking for. So I don't know. We got, I guess, are we open for him? So right now, this is, I guess, clarification for the, his department, I guess, so that he understands our intent of our, correct. No, we cannot, I can't do anything about the judgment that was made last month. So this is a clarification for him to make sure that when he's inspecting, it met our intent and our vote last month. So we're good? Okay. All right. Um, with that, I guess we will adjourn our Board of Zoning Appeals meeting and uh, open up the Board of Residential Building Appeals. We'll call that to order at 5, 12 p.m. Uh, roll call. Mr. Goulas? Here. Mr. Vukatich? Here. Ms. Andrews? Here. Mr. Reed? Here. Chairman Rowe? Here. All right, same thing as the Board of Zoning Appeals you just heard. Just make sure when we state your case, you step up to the podium, sign in, state your name, and then give us a little background on the request. Um, so with that, we'll get started. First uh, agenda item is A30-22, appeal of the 2019 RCO Chapter 602.1 relating to wall construction location is 7,000 Corduroy Road. The applicant is Greg Shane. Hey, I am Greg Shanks. I am the self-contractor, my father who's helping me build. Um, I had Mark Kelly, the building uh, instructor or inspector, come look at a wall that I wanted to um, build the one day, and he okayed it. When he was in there, he noticed that we had bought some rough sawn lumber. I said, well, I don't know if you know that's something that you can use or not, this and that. I said, well, it's not load supporting everything I've been told. The guy I bought it from at the sawmill said, is it load supporting or load bearing? Oh, yeah, sorry. Barn dominium. So this isn't an actual, you know, stick build. It's a, it's a barn house. Um, some people call them barn dominiums. The entire frame structure, everything load supporting is to spec. It's stamped lumber. Pine, good to go. This is all just the in-between studs for like the nailers. So nothing load bearing. And that's when I had reached out to this guy at the sawmill. And he said, well, is it load bearing? I said, no. He said, okay, you're good to go then. So I purchased it and used it and had no problems installing it. And then that's when Mark had said something about it and I see the area he references in the ORC, and that's what I had tried to, to go off of as well. Um, and he's saying, well, it's load supporting and load bearing. And in the ORC chapter six, it doesn't give a definition for load supporting. So in my mind, I'm thinking load supporting, load bearing are the same thing. Uh, load bearing's definition has different <laughs> support different. in it. Yeah. That's what I was going off of on the ORC. Just because there was no like definition for load supporting, just like there's a bunch of other definitions. So like trying to work with Mark on it, see what he wanted to do. This kind of seemed like the best option, um, and just kind of waited my time until now. And we brought some wood to show that there really isn't much of a difference. It's um, we got the meter. Go ahead, Jim. You look like you're chomping at the bit. No, no. I talk. just, I wanted, it, it was my suggestion that they yeah. come here. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not, much, kiln, it's not kiln dry. Okay. In this product. 
13 to 14 on that. Even our stamp stuff, it's 10 to 12. So it's not okay. outrageously off. So Okay, so, uh, so we had a question too because it is confusing. It says load supporting, so I called the Board of Building Standards. And, uh, and I felt you know, that they might be able to use it, but they, their interpretation was that uh, load supporting is different than load bearing. So, so in my you know, eyes. So yeah. uh, again, yeah. that was their opinion. It doesn't mean that it's absolute. Did they give a difference between, I mean, I guess load bearing Well, what they said that load supporting could, any load at all. Drywall. Right. Uh, yeah. Load bearing would be a structural load on Correct. Them, which 75% of stuff is in the garage. And the part of the house it is in, it's going to be shiplap. Exterior wall. Yeah, close. So, and that was after we had spoke to Mark and we knew that there might be an issue. We didn't use any more of it in the house. Thankfully, we started in that section that's the tall ceiling. So we didn't mm -hmm. use the rest of it just in the garage portion. If I could add. Well, the, <clears throat> trouble, something. the trouble with uh, rough sawn lumber, it's... It's ungraded, first of all. Well, yeah, it's not regulated. I mean, the, the other knows. thing is you don't know how consistent the moisture uh, is in each one. So one might be different than the other. There's not a really a lot of consistency. Personally, I would never use, uh, I, I would always use kiln dried lumber because you don't want nail pops. You don't want it twisting. You don't want any of those things happening. But with that being said, it's not what I think is the best thing. It's, it's what uh, the code says. When we had priced it out, it was a four thousand dollar difference in my wood. I know that's not your guys' concern. That's what I was looking at when I called the sawmill guy. That was the first thing he said. Is this for load bearing? I said no. I got all that up. It's part of the minimum. So go ahead. He's in Michigan, so obviously there's a different code. But going off that and the ORC. I guess I'm not asking to purchase anymore or keep you keep you know buying more of it or anything like that. I just want to I guess know that what I use is okay. We air nailed everything. It's ring shank nails. It just I mean pulling so, it out or taking out would be almost. We crazy. got Dave. I think where some of the problems so, are that what he's talking about with nail pops and stuff is it's your house and you're fine with it because you're using it. Next week, you could get a job offer in San Francisco. You put it on a market, you go. Somebody buys it, they come in. It was passed by the building code, and all of a sudden, a year later, they start noticing all kinds of defaults in their drywall and their door jams and things where it's dried and it's moved. You know, so, so how many all, even kiln dried moves? But <laughs> that's so it's kind of like well, this is mine. I, I'm fine with it. Well, and you might stay there forever. That's but you cool might not. Plan, yeah. So then. The next person comes in and there's something catastrophic happens and then they come back and go, geez, what can be going on here? We don't understand why this is doing this. And then they dig a little deeper and pretty soon it's like, well, geez, geez he used, you know, he used tree lumber and, and it dried. So and I guess that's, that's the that's the main concern, I believe. And that's why in the house portion, again, it, it's 75% in the garage and in the house, it's only in the section that's it's going to be a shiplap wall and tongue and groove ceiling. I 100% see what you're saying about the nail popping in the future. It's just one of those things. I don't plan to sell the house. I plan to make this a forever home. We got sitting on five acres, and this is we get married in a, a week or so. So this is kind of our future plan. So, so how many square feet of this material, wall wise? Oh, did we use? Or? Yeah. Yes. So I'd say about if you did the whole garage, it'd be about fifteen hundred. That's about what was all used. So right now we basically have filled in between all the posts and the building mm -hmm. with this rough saw in the garage area. If we go to the interior walls and start building from there, and that's your recommendation is going in there. We have probably we 
we have a stack maybe that board is wide about that high left. So, I, Go ahead, Dave. So the definitions are not in chapter six, they're actually in chapter two. The closest definition to what is it, load supporting, I think is the actual word that they use. Um, the code su section that was cited says, uh, I can't find it right now. It was load supporting, right? Yes, load yeah. supporting is what the wording that they use. The def closest definition to that is load bearing element. And it basically says that it's supporting anything other than its own weight. So even drywall, shiplap, you know, any of that stuff would fall under that. So I also read the code commentary, and um, although it's not Ohio, it's based on the right. International Residential Code, the commentary. And it basically was saying the same thing, too, is it's anything that is carrying any other load other than just its own weight. Mm -hmm. So pretty much any wall in the house. Yeah. yeah. Every wall. Yeah, and you know that um, biggest. My biggest concern with that is moisture content is definitely a concern because of all the things we talked about, which are really aesthetics. They won't make it fail, but we don't know what species it is or what the compressive strength is or anything of that wood. I do know it's either it. fir or pine. I don't know between which ones. Yeah, and we do have the moisture content meter. Which, I mean, we can show you. We got three different types of stamp lumber we've used. Did you put those in the oven before you did? <laughs> you should have. <laughs> should have. They felt warm. <laughs> <laughs> there, there um, but like I said, our the rough song comes out about 13 to 14. And the, the bigger one is the truss. You can cut that off. And this comes out about 10 to 11. And those come out about. Between, you know, 9 to 10 and that one being 13, 14, <clears throat> I know it all settles at whatever the moisture is where it's installed. I just, with everything being open the way it is. So, so where, where was the, so what point did Mark feel like it was an issue like like I think we can see that it does. Okay, so it was a rough framing inspection. I don't know why was he out there for something else? I had asked him about doing like a a step wall, I guess is what I call it. And he came out and I said, Can you come out and look at it before we do it? I just want to make sure it's right. I said yeah. So he came out and looked at it and said, Yeah, you're good to go, no problem. And then we we're just kind of talking a little bit and then it saw the lumber sitting there on the ground. I said, is that rough sorry? I said, yeah. And that's when we got a conversation. Okay. So we are out there for a consultation okay. of some sort. And, uh, and he had said that he had, um, I think both of you guys had called Jay at the building of Ohio. Board of Building Standards. Yeah. And yeah. that's when you guys let him know that I might have reached out just to get clarification. Yeah, I did. I reached out to him two or three times. I left a voicemail. Got nothing back on right. So the the garage where it's used right now, what's the intent on the covering? I guess just the metal siding, like like a barn. Same stuff we use on the outside of the on the inside of the garage. Is it is it filled in between the support post? Is that where yeah. you use it? Yes. So the keep actual it flushed in the girts and purlins and my face. That's all stamped. Now, did you use laminated posts or six by six solids? Laminated. Yeah. Might be. Yeah. You didn't check Might the moisture be. on them, did you? Mm -hmm. yeah. You wouldn't want to scare <laughs> you. Wouldn't want to scare <laughs> you. Wouldn't scare you. you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I think the biggest concern is, is knowing. It's just like what Bill said, too. You never know what's going to happen. You know, if this house turns over to somebody in a year from now and all of a sudden there's drywall just popping everywhere. I think it's just protecting. Um, <laughs> what, stay married or stay in the house? <laughs> Take odds on that. Or she takes the house. 
usually if you lose one, you lose the other. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So currently you haven't done any interior partitions. Right now you're just back framing between the poles and 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 how many sections inside of the main house itself do you – in other words, does the code vary from storage building usage versus living mm -hmm. space? Just mm -hmm. It's just anything. So I got a question. If uh, a lot of situations in the residential code, if he asks somebody look at this project and stamp the job, then what? That that. I was actually going to ask that. Is it, have you considered having someone look at it as an alternative engineered design? There's a code section that allows that. I did when Mark originally said you want to have someone. Talking about maybe having someone come out and stamp it themselves. Well, we'd have to. Well, that's different. That requires someone testing it. That's quite expensive. I would, I would say it would have been that. Yeah. The, well, <laughs> this I, there's a section in the code that's called an alter, yes. alternative engineered design, and what it entails is that you hire a design professional yes. that's like yes. an architect right. or engineer registered in the state of Ohio like, to, to, to examine that lumber, do some research with the mill. And they put their seal on it to determine if they feel that it meets same minimum requirements as stamped lumber in the specific condition that you're using it in. It wouldn't apply if your neighbor tried to use yeah. your same. It would only be for just that area. Um, you know, that, that might be an option. But they might look at it just for that, just for the parts you put up maybe, you know, to save you from tearing it apart. Hoping to not have to sneak any more money into this. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody, somebody would have to be, take that liability and that risk because they're basically, right. they're like Dave said, they're going to stamp your lumber package and say, this is good. It's going to hold the drywall. It's going to be fine. But um, well, I guess that's kind of why I feel like when you say it's, it's kind of a personal thing, you know, is this something that you, know, you don't recommend it, but is that just. Well, here, here's what I mean. I, through my experience, I would never use lumber that it's not kiln dry. Now, I have a hard time believing that didn't go through a kiln to get it down to that moisture content. I I I don't think air drying, unless it was sitting there a long time in a dry spot, would ever get down to, did you say it was 10? What's that? No. I said 13, 13 to 14. 13, 13, 14. Okay. 14. It's, you know, I mean, it's just hard for me to believe it didn't go in a kiln. It's also not twisted. Right. Yes, so it's stacked like you're stacking walnut. Yeah, you're it's slow curing. It's it's kind of like the material they use for pallets, you know. So uh um I, I, I think this that um you know you could consider the uh you know using it in between those columns uh for furring, you know, count it as furring. I bet that's a possibility. I don't think having an engineer stamp is the right way to go. I think I think we either need to have it approved or not approved, you know. It's something that we can just use it between the posts, like you said, not use it for interior walls. We totally understand that. So the reason you're using it in the house, you said you're using it on a tall wall scenario and on uh, ceiling condition, it just in one room or? Yeah, because that's right when we found out. We had a bunch of leftover wood from when we originally So we had built that in the house first, and that's when market came in. So we didn't really start using all this wood yet. We used most of it in the garage. So you're down to you're down to a ceiling condition and a tall wall in the house, and then yeah. the and then the garage. And in that end, probably four to five eight foot sections use that wood. It's not even the whole room. And the only reason why we even consider this to begin with is because oh, yeah. when ours was. Menards was charging me four hundred and fifty dollars to deliver it, and I had the sawmill in Michigan for one hundred fifty, and it was almost four thousand more just in lumber. If, if, if our is. It's a tough one. <laughs> I tried. I tried to go with Menards. Um, 
I'm going to take a wild guess, Dave. You haven't dealt with this on your uh, jurisdiction. Pardon me? I'm going to take a wild guess. You haven't dealt with this in your Never. jurisdiction. No. I mean, I, I did a little looking up online myself before the meeting, and it hasn't really been – it hasn't gone over well in other jurisdictions from what I could read online, but same situation. They're all kind of torn between the fact that there's no – nothing to track with it so closest we ever came to it was when i was in toledo and we had um unmarked metal studs um but that was on a commercial job yeah. so we definitely made them yank those it's tough because uh i know that there's probably worse stuff than this inside of other houses <laughs> What he says is that he cuts it and stickers it right away. Which I guess is like not killing the dry way, but it's a way of drying. Right. It, they usually sticker it for about a month and then put it to the kiln to dry. I'm a regular hard. I guess from a city standpoint, how do we, if our concern is, I mean, well, load being there's drywall, you know, potentially going to be on it. Well, you could look at the exterior walls uh, as being, uh, you know, that they're carrying the support and you're just furring the walls out, even with the uh, six by sixes. You're still running girts on the inside, even with this infill, or you're not running the girts anymore. This is your yeah. He's that's going your fast switch it up to in stud between. walls, but you're still fastening your panels into. They're in line with your with your six by six post, right? So you're still fastening it into your six by six post. How far are they apart? The six by six. Yeah. What what is your feet? Just under eight. Yeah, about seven and a half. Your panel width is what? Four. Panel width. Your panels are hanging in between. You're putting metal metal liner panel on the inside too, or what? In the garage side too. So you ran those. You ran them. That framing in that area horizontally. The liner panels going pretty cool. But if he hangs his board with the liner panel, you're gonna run you're up and run down vertical. So right. you're not you're not gonna hit you're not gonna be able to hit every so then are you are you putting purlins on that then before you put the liner panel over no. the top of it? So I mean you're studying it in like a, a insulatable wall cavity. Right. But you're running you could run the panels the you're going to run your panels horizontally, your metal liner panel? Vertically. Vertically. So what we're saying is you're not going to be hitting studs on every joint with a three-foot panel and a 16 center. Oh, if we need it, if it was something that you got recommended horizontal. Oh, I was just more curious how you were doing the, how you were skinning it with the liner panel. You shove another stud, regular stud in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Then you're the hitting are, The other studs. ones are technically uh, insulation. Not really uh, study. I mean, on the interior of the house, okay if you run your board horizontal, your drywall, you're going to hit your major. Yeah, there you just got a regular That's typical it. stud cavity. Yeah. Yeah. So in the in the garage portion of this large building. Are you completely done with the framing with this material? So you have an abundance of that left. Yeah, about a little stuff wide or about that tall. I was just wondering if it, if it could be used in a garage, which is basically a barn, and it was 
none of it in the actual living space portion. You know what I mean? But you're still gonna you're gonna have an excess of material left over, and then and then require that any living space be for code. You know what I mean? That's and if that's we would understand that. I mean, I don't have a problem with it being in a barn with metal over it. You know what I mean? That's a, to me, that's a different. These barn houses are different. We're running into a lot of them. It's definitely, I get a lot of magazines with some giant ones out west and northwest and stuff. Some huge ones. And now they become the thing around here, huh? So, this is only what, maybe the second one? Third? Third? I'm interested. In the what the savings at the end of the race is when you do it that way versus a typical foundation. So if we I mean, I've framed for 42 years, so I've framed a lot of stuff, and I don't, you know, and I I build a barn that resembles a pole barn, but it's a stick frame on a foundation. It's 50 by 80. So I have I have studs with purlins and whatever. So is there is there I'm a just curious at the end because I've seen them get pretty elaborate. Is, is any of this material used in the uh, our separation wall between no. your living area and the garage. Nope. I mean, is there is there an opportunity where we alternate studs or something to try and help the cause out to, in the house? Like we're, we're hitting a true stud every other stud or something to try and help the lumber pack it. around the right. perimeter. Or yeah, yeah. Um, well, the perimeter is, I think, is where we're feeling better about. Oh no, the barn area. I think I'm with Bill. Same thing. It's in the, in the but he's got excess material beyond the the barn side. So yeah. that's where I'm trying to. Okay, where can we use this other lumber? Where we feel a little better. You have. I'm sorry. Do you have? Do you have? Material to infill all the way around the perimeter of the building. So we have just that one wall left in the garage, and yes, we buy about thirty bolts left. That would do the living do area that perimeter would, wall. Living area that perimeter, perimeter wall would finish all the perimeter walls. It's not enough to do the interior partition walls. Right. So you keep this to the perimeter walls, and then you got drywall on the inside. And you take it on your perimeter walls. Yeah. So you're going to hit your major. Columns with your drywall. Correct. In my experience, you're going to ex you're going to experience more movement on your column lines yeah. themselves than you are that lumber. And I also think if you um, called out to run a minimum of two horizontal blocking systems in those cavities, you would keep that no matter how dry it got to move it to so an intermediate block. Correct. 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 That, that would hold them. They're, they're not going to move. Not if they're as dry as that. So, you, you stagger those blocks. No, just to keep that center point twist. They're not going to twist where the connected top and bottom plate. You're not going to have issues there. In the mid spans, if you was to block them, almost like a floor system and bridging a couple center rows, you you would it would be hard for that to move enough to cause nail pops, in my opinion. But, and, and only allow it on the perimeters and you know, maybe the, to. The yeah, you can stagger them inch and a half, saying gun them, gun them, gun them. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's better than trying to line them so with toenails. If it's something that I know you referenced maybe in your third stud, if you use. No, I think if you're going back that mentality, it's going to straighten. Yeah, it's going to hold as straight as the rest of the building. Well, the entire partition, I don't think they're saying. Perimeter. Perimeter. Perimeters only. Yeah, I'd say interior, you need to stay with. To stay with what you have, with new, with um, approved lumber, right. you know what I mean, and, and that that can help you use up what you've already purchased. I mean, I know I've been buying a few two by fours. It is it is it's hard to to, to stomach, you know. It's just crazy. But but I mean, I think that would be a pretty good alternative to your perimeter walls, which really? is yeah. barn barn construction, and then you're stepping into. Any other questions from the board? <laughs> you guys got questions down there? What are your thoughts? <laughs> I still like the idea of 
you know, I, I, Jim doesn't agree with me, but the alternative method, I'd like to take, have somebody else take liability other than me as a board member. I, I, I don't think it's an ulterior method because it's not allowed. So uh, if, a, if somebody, if the engineer came and said he didn't need a window here, and it's an egress window, would we allow that because it says it's all right? Um, not in love, no. Because it's strictly against that. So I, as, as a building official, I would be saying. It's kind of how I feel, too. I know that, you know, all the discussions we're having, I agree with you guys. I, I know you have the field experience. You're an architect. I'm an engineer. I, I believe that that solution would work, I, I, but I just have a hard time I, going I against the code. I would say that Jay said that he wouldn't mind using it because he got to work with his engineer as firm. I didn't go any further. Because it's flat and it's connected on the flat run horizontally. Well, you can throw out a wall at the vertical. You have just as much twist on it as furring as you do as a stud. Come on, Ron, you got an opinion. You've inspected a lot of stuff in your life. Uh, it's, it's like you said. It's, Tough to take the liability for this product. Uh, I agree with the, you know, I agree with the blocking. I, I know what it's going to do there. Well, you think uh, if we approve it, then we're we're taking that total risk as a yeah. as a city, mm -hmm. as a board member, as a board member. <laughs> too. You know, you because you're what you're really doing is the giving them a vi a variance not to comply with the code. Oh, they and I don't know the reason. Any time that we've, as a, as a building official, when I've had something come in front of me to the Board of Building Appeals, the only time I ever supported that variance was when they were doing something else. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, be, or there was a, a reason an existing building, they couldn't, you know, couldn't quite comply with something because of, existing conditions and they're renovating it, changing the use, things like that. I think that that's the reason that this board exists. I don't. Is there, is there a, what about opinion versus foreign side versus habitable side, uninhabitable versus habitable? The, the code doesn't distinguish between it. I mean, it, same rules would apply if this was just a yeah. regular accessory structure. Still says you got to use graded lumber for anything that supports a load and and they say any load is anything other than that's member. I was going to look and see in the definitions if it says anything about furring. I don't think it probably does, but. That's where it was supposed to be the rule was in ORC, every key would have highlighted when you go to the definition. Yeah. Chapter 6 starts out right above Ralph's song, so it's supporting. So not highlighting it, not showing it the definition. It was a poorly written code. <laughs> so, so all right, so. Is there a way for us to, uh, I know you, Jim, you said yes, you wanted either yes or a no. I think what we're really doing is that, our, do we agree or disagree with the building officials interpretation, right? Isn't that what this is? Correct. And our building official interprets it that it can't be used. So we're overriding our building official right now if we say yes. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that was my thing. I, I called and looked for just a clarification, an explanation, and I called it three times. I didn't get anything. Yeah, but I mean, he told me, you know, uh, so, and, and I think it's probably the correct interpretation. Again, is it going to be a problem? Probably not if you use it on the perimeter walls. And I understand that, but for me, yeah, you know, and, and all these boards are not really supposed to take into consideration monetary uh, things. It's it's more is is it is it allowed or isn't allowed? So I understand the situation. And you're you're totally opposed to having somebody else look at but a professional if the side. Board, if the board says 
if there was a design professional that stamped it. But with that stamp, he's taking the liability. That's their liability, not our liability. Right. I'm saying the engineer or architect. So if our recommendation was uh, it'd this be approved. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> It'll follow you. So if, if this board were to say we would approve contingent of an approval of a professional engineer architect, professional seal approval. I know ag buildings don't have any inspection, but this would be this would be allowable in an agriculture well, district. Well, you don't have any jurisdiction. No, they don't have any jurisdiction. They planted a garden. <laughs> if if he came in with an engineered stamp on it, we wouldn't be here tonight. Well, no, Jim. I would accept it without. I I don't think that's. I think they, they need a, uh, some kind of relief from it. But if, if this board disagrees with that, um, with my interpretation of that, we can... Well, then the liability goes on the professional. Okay. Right? That's, I'm okay with that. If you guys say that, uh, that you would okay as long as the professional engineer puts his stamp. And at the end of the day, I would have to guess that if you went that route, you would have more money than the differential and lumber to get somebody to, to oh, sign I, and I take know. that. Not necessarily. No. If it was, if they didn't feel it was a big risk. I think I think you'd work with an engineer before. Yeah, it's it's close. You'd be surprised. There's a lot of people. Out by the way, there is no definition in the code for furring strip. So <laughs> I just double checked. I didn't think there would be. All right. Where do we stand? Does anybody want to make a motion? Anybody? Any takers? I'll, I'll say that, uh, you know, I, I, Definitely see where you guys are coming from, and I feel bad about this, but I, the code's written the way that it is, and some, as building officials, we have to enforce some things we don't always agree with or think is logical. So I, I guess I'll, with that in mind, I'll make a motion that we um, support the um, interpretation of the code by the building official. With no added language. Not even the professional. That's my motion. Okay. I'll second it. Roll call. Mr. Goulas? Yes. Mr. Bukatich? No. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Mr. Reed? I want to make sure what if I'm saying yes to. I'm saying yes to we support the fact that it's not acceptable. That's correct. To, the the yes vote affirms Jim's interpretation that you're not allowed to use ungraded lumber in that situation. I want to change my vote to a I yes. Vote. Then. So we're at three yeses. No, correct. Yes. Yes. All right, we will adjourn the meeting at 5.49 p.m.